Now, if that was the end of the story, we could just say, okay, drugs are bad, just say no. But it turns out there's a little bit more to the story. There are specific chemicals, for example, that can be added to the feed of animals that will artificially stimulate dopamine production in the brains of those animals, lead to systematic overeating. For example, if you take rats and give them unlimited access to their food of choice, their rat, their rat chow, and get genetically uh, identical rats and give them the same food but put these chemicals in the feed, the rats given the chemicals will increase their body weight 49% in just 60 days. Now, did the rat get fat because of psychological reasons? Did that rat get fat because mommy didn't love him enough? Or daddy loved him too much? Did he have stress of work? Or, or is it biological reasons? Did they get fat because they artificially stimulated the, do the dopamine production cascade in the brain that resulted in systematic overeating? Yeah, it's biological, not psychological in this particular case. What are chemicals that you can add to the feed of animals that will artificially stimulate dopamine production and lead to systematic overeating? You all recognize this molecule. Sugar. Yeah, sugar doesn't exist in this concentrated form in nature. You have to manufacture it. And now we consume over 135 pounds per year per person of this chemical. Now, I don't eat any of it, which means somebody's eating my share, too. Hopefully nobody in this room. We've increased our use of high fructose corn syrup, which processes very much like alcohol does in the liver, by over 1,000% since 1986. But we don't know why our kids are getting so fat and people are becoming obese. It's a complete mystery. What's another chemical that you can add to the feed that will increase overeating? Recognize this? How about if we do it, show you a picture of it? What's that? Oil, including olive oil. What's worse is we take this substance and we heat it to high temperature and then we use it to like soak up grease into otherwise perfectly healthy product like potatoes. We call them potato chips and french fries. Fried foods, I tell my patients, look, rather than eating fried foods, what you should do is find the deep fryer, stick your head in it and suck because that's essentially what you're doing when you're eating those fried foods. What about another chemical that we add to food, sodium chloride or salt? Salt creates a bit of a problem. But people say, well, wait a second. They understand oil, because it's got nine calories per gram, and they understand sugar, because it's concentrated empty calories. But salt doesn't have any calories. What's the problem with salt? Well, one of the problems with salt, besides the increased blood volume and high blood pressure and the fact that you get edema and swelling and congestive heart failure and increased risk of osteoporosis, and changes in your microbiome. Another major problem with salt is it stimulates what's called passive overeating. So if you were to eat till you reach natural satiation, eating a product, for example, like rice, and then compare it to eating it when it's salted, you'll find you eat more before you feel satisfied when things are salted. And so as a consequence, it can be a major contributing factor to obesity, even for people trying to eat an otherwise health-promoting diet. 93% of all the calories consumed in industrialized countries now come from either animal foods, that's meat, fish, fowl, eggs, and dairy products, or chemicals added to the food, the form of oil, salt, and sugar. So 7% of calories now come from fruits and vegetables. Now, I know many of you are vegans, and you look at that because you're naturally an optimist, and you say, well, wait a second, 7%? There's still hope. Let's keep hope alive. Yeah, I don't mean to rain on your parade, but of that 7%, a third of its potatoes served almost exclusively as french fries and potato chips. The reality is that fruits and vegetables don't even make a statistically significant percentage of the diet of people in industrialized countries. They are now the, the decoration on the plate. It's called the pleasure trap, the hidden force that undermines health and happiness. And it just coincidentally also happens to be the title of our book, The Pleasure Trap, a disturbing book that does not tell you what you want to hear but does tell you what you need to know if you want to get and stay healthy, and also why it's going to be so difficult to live in a world designed to make you fat, sick, and miserable and overcome the forces of evil that are going to try to undermine your success.